hello and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I remembered to say it this time. Last well, time, just you know, you're so Well, because you're used to me saying it, and then you say it, and then I wasn't here. It was hilarious. You, you, like, the music stopped, and I was kind of like, and then I was like, oh, crap, it's I'm me. Also, I'm supposed I have to, to say, say something. something. Yeah, that's awesome. That's did fun. you have a great holiday? I did. Um, we lucked, we really did luck out. I had people before, we went to um, Longboat Key, which is a key right off of Sarasota, Florida. Oh, you're going to rat yourself out. I said she went to an undisclosed location. I don't care. Sarasota I... was wonderful. I will tell you that. I would definitely go back again. Um, it was quiet. We, I'm glad that we decided to stay on a key because there really wasn't a lot of people. We did drive to Siesta Key, um, Siesta Key Beach, which is like the number one beach in the country, just to go, just to, yeah, we were there for like five minutes. We had no intention of staying on the right. beach. Dan was like, and he's from Rhode Island. He's like, why are there thousands of people? I mean, it was just oh, it was people for packed. as far. And I was like, I wouldn't want to do that pre-COVID, let right. alone, I was just like, I don't get it. So we had a nice, quiet location. Um, but everybody kept telling me that it was going to be cold. Like, no, you're not going to be able to go in the water or anything. And I was like, really? Because I'm looking at the weather thing. Literally, we flew home on Tuesday, and um, literally on Monday, I think it was, the, it, like 20 or 30 degree change. So it, it was oh. actually warmer in New Hampshire when we left Florida. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it was nice. It was much easier to leave when right. you're like, oh, this is great, but... Right. And, you know, I mean, it was we held down the fort here. Uh, I looked after Tammy's... <laughs> And Dan's adorable, yeah. I don't know, what, what what was it, a Cocker Spaniel? She's a Spaniel uh, Dachshund, Pitbull, Sch uh, Cattle Schnau dog. Someone said Schnauzer. Yeah, Dan said Schnauzer, he lied. Um, she's a brown dog. She is She is very cute, but I will tell you, my 14-year-old dog is very happy that the cute teenager has left the house. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not really sure at first when we got her back, what, if she really understood what the heck was going on. Because every time Dan went to leave someplace, she was like, wait, where are you going? What are you doing? Where <laughs> yeah, are you going? Uh, but she's fine now. It makes sense. They're fine. They're dogs. They're, they live. So COVID madness is pretty much what's on the menu. Yeah. Um, uh, people, A lot of people ask me, well, what was it like in Florida? You know, it really wasn't that much different. Um, you had to wear a mask to go into restaurants. But once you were in restaurants, they didn't really care. And a lot of the dining's outdoors anyways. Um, there's no state mandates in Florida. Um, you Almost every store required you to wear a mask. So it really wasn't that much different. It just seemed like the people weren't so frantic. Literally, I was trying to figure, put my finger on it. I think I think a lot of it comes from the way we in, inundate people. Oh, you with, don't say oh the my God. washing the fear. The real, fear. the real epidemic is fear. Yeah. And um, and really, like this general pitting against each other, you know, it's it's like I will keep saying it until the penny drops for people. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. If you are a mask wearer and you are so concerned that someone who's not wearing a mask might somehow, you know, it's also not like if you see someone who's not wearing a mask, that person isn't a vector who no. is 100% going to give you the vid. That person, <laughs> it's like any other flu season, except now we are reporting on who has the right. flu. Um yeah, it's just frustrating. Like I, I Nashua's talking about a curfew. Yeah, nine thirty at night curfew. I don't because understand. Because what but, germs go to bed at nine thirty? So that, it's insane. That folks. was the conversation. It wasn't just New Hampshire people that feel this way. So we had a lot of conversations with people that were staying in the uh, in the place that we were at. Oh, was it a lot of like tourists? Oh uh, yeah, we had people from Michigan, people from Illinois, people from Indiana. You know, just a variety of people who just needed to get away and wanted to go someplace warm. You know, and um and people. Interestingly enough, uh, my takeaway from the whole trip was the people who interact with people the most, the people who work at TSA, the people who work at Southwest Airlines, the re people who work in restaurants are the ones who said we need to stop all this craziness now. Like well, they are the ones that would probably be at the highest risk and they are the ones the least concerned. Well, they're also the ones that are suffering yeah. where everything in life is a trade-off, right? So if, if as we know, this is not some crazy, deathly novel flu that is going to kill the entire world no. like they predicted. Uh, it is, you know, there's a 99, the new number I read was a 99.8% survival rate. I'm still using 99.6, which, you know, if you understand stats and you round up, is almost 100% survival rate. Now, I do understand that people are passing away with COVID. Yep. But you know what? And 
2019 and in 2021, people will also die of the seasonal flu. You know, I saw an article this week that was about Christy Nome's grandmother who passed away in a long-term care facility. She was 98 years old. She did not die with or of COVID, but of course the stories were that way. And they were sort of framed to be like, ha ha, you killed grandma. <laughs> Grandma's 98. And I'm like, well, you know, you're very lucky if you make it to 98. Yeah. That is a wonderful life. You know what typically happens? You know, I don't know, once you get older, you die. Yeah, it happens. And the reality is, is that life expectancy in New Hampshire is only 80 years old, which always amazes me. Every time I only, look it up. Only, that's super high. No, but actually. I'm saying, but, you know, 80 to me it's is high, not crazy old, right? And I was like, wow. So when I got home, because I hadn't been tracking New Hampshire COVID numbers while I was away, I looked because I was like, <laughs> so I did, like, I did look <laughs> and I thought, and there was, I forget what the number was, but there had been, you know, 16 people or 20 people or whatever it was had died in the time we were gone. And almost all of, well, I don't remember exactly the number. Almost all of them were in long-term care facilities. Almost all of them were over 80. I think all of them were at least 70 or older. So when, when people talk about, and it's not like I'm discounting anybody's, you know, anybody's relative who happens to be 72 years old in a nursing home passing away, but should everybody else's life be upturned. I mean, I have, we have friends, we have mutual friends who own restaurants and small businesses and whatnot, um, who are very concerned that they won't be able to survive the winter. Their businesses are being decimated. I mean, this you is, go into Murphy, I was in, Mur uh, if you go into Murphy's on a weekend, I mean, where there should be full and there's like five people. It's also, I mean, I can honestly say, I won't name what the business is just, you know, to, to, because we are also somehow moving into this snitch society yeah, it's not where these healthy. people think, oh, you know what? I'm going to go go complain and I'm going to get these people fined. And you know what? If you're that person, just please stay at home That's so right. the rest of well, us that, can get on with I'll our say, lives. well, I know one place. I will, um, the coffee shop over in Bedford, Simply Delicious Baking, um, which does make some wonderful, delicious baking Something items. Simply and delicious. Coffee um, was fined $500 by the state. Because oh, yeah, they they're... weren't wearing masks, and um, so here's what. But I... they literally say that they think there's a woman because they see this car drive by with a like. There's people. Why do you care so much? Because there are the snitch society, the Karens of the world. Sorry for the nice Karens I'm out sorry. there. I apologize. You know that you've been sort of <laughs> lumped in with this, but the people who think they own you, yeah. the control freaks, the busy bodies, the, the crazy people who literally are like, I'm going to tell you how to live your life. Well, how about you go live your life, yeah. figure out what you need to do to make yourself a productive, healthy human being and leave the other people to go figure that well, out. Especially in businesses that aren't necessary. You know, like, I don't want to talk about Walmart, Costco, or whatever, because that's like, that's a whole other argument to have. But in a small bake shop that sells coffee, no one needs to go in there. No right. one. Right. No one needs to have a baked good or a cup of coffee. So if you do not like, and even outside of COVID, if you don't like the standards that they have in their business, please do not go into that business. So Here's what I think happened, and, and two things. One is I am going to, I think, just start a program. Maybe I'll work with Rebuild New Hampshire. Um, and I think that businesses, small businesses, must say enough is enough. Yeah. I think we should create a poster that says, uh, you know, first of all, I'll have something out of the New Hampshire Constitution. Um, and then I think it should just say no masks required and that we should just civilly disobedience, put out posters, you know, and, and say, take notice, we are not going to comply with these yeah. ridiculous rules. And if you don't agree with the posted thing that says you are not required to wear a mask in this store, then please don't go into that store it's... and don't complain about it. Because basically what we are now being forced to do is everything is going to have to become civil disobedience. I was talking to a reporter yesterday and she wanted me to name the names of the people who um, I think did the impeachment against Chris mm. Sununu. And first of all, I was like, I can't name the names and I don't name the names. You know, I read them in the newspaper, go find them yourself, right? But, you know, I was just, she was, you know, she had never heard it framed as don't look at it as critical or don't look at the freedom reps who were elected on the platform mm. of freedom, yep. you know, which I would argue was what Chris Sununu got elected on as well. Yep. And then he turned around and 
pretty much, you know, was very disrespectful to his base. But, um, you know, I said to her, look at these people's actions rather through the lens of civil disobedience. You know, the courts have failed us. Uh, we have a governor who is just writing executive orders. We don't have a sitting legislature at the moment. Like, it's just like, okay, so we're being ruled by someone who says he's in charge of the state on his own. He suspended the U.S. and American Constitu uh, the uh, New Hampshire constitutions. And so I'm like, what else are people supposed to do? These are eff elected officials. Yeah. How do we... Um, you know, let our protests be known that we live in America. There is a seasonal flu going around. There is no reason to mandate what human beings wear when they leave the house. There is no reason to institute curfews. This is not even how germs or viruses work. So what is going so, on? So um, I'm going to go off on a tangent over here because I completely lost track of what I was going to say over there. Um, I was arguing with people on Facebook because, you know, when I'm home, that's kind of what I do. Um, <laughs> There were people talking about, um, I don't even remember what the, the discussion was on, to be honest, but somehow, you know, it always goes down to, well, just wear the mask. And somebody said, more than one person said, well, this, you know, we if everybody would just wear the mask for, you know, for the next few months, then we could get rid of this virus. And I thought, oh, this is so sad because I'm amazed at how many people, and I was like, that that's... Wearing a mask, wearing a mask, social distancing, and even the vaccine will not end the virus. Nothing will end the virus, the only, folks. What, uh, the only so way let's that, work at herd I think immunity. The, right. I was going to say, the only thing that the virus would end, eventually end is when there is nobody left to infect. Then the virus will just die. And, and honestly, by that stage, it'll have mutated. Exactly. I mean, as we know, so, you know, everyone wants to say this is a new virus. It, it's not. It's a coronavirus. They've yeah. been around forever. They mutate. They change. And then we go from there. It, um, it was perplexing, though, because it wasn't just one person. It was like other. And you could tell by the way they were writing that they were sincerely believing that. Well, that's the indoctrination, right? That's so the no coming out of the media. I got into a big fight with one of my best friends. We both worked together, uh, you know, in California in the dot-com bubble yeah. in San Francisco. We moved to New York around about yeah. the same time. She's in New York. I moved to New Hampshire. I chose freedom. I chose New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I chose the live free or die state. And, uh, but, you know, we correspond. And because there's been so much tension with this, we've sort of gotten to the stage where it's kind yeah. of like, let's talk about the weather. Yeah, you know? anything. Let's talk uh, about something else. You know, although, you know, they managed to actually, you know, turn the weather into a, a fighting paradigm as well with, with climate change and all of that. That being said, so we've kind of left each other alone. But I have become more outspoken because I think what's happening is nonsense. So I posted something, and it was a blog post. And she made a late night post, which I'm sure she regretted because it was like one in the morning. I was yeah. up at seven in the morning, you know, and I was like, well, you know, you came here and you picked a fight with me. So now I'm going to let you know how I feel. So her position was by not wearing a mask, I'm impinging on her freedom. And I'm like, mm. no. And here is something, you know, to all my progressive brethren out there. You guys ran with my body, my choice, right? You, you. Inst instituted that as a baseline. So either it's my body, my choice, and that means that applies to my body, my choice in this scenario, or it doesn't apply in the scenario for abortions that right. you want to use it Can't for. Be but if you are arguing my body, your choice, we have a problem. <laughs> That's right. I, my brain came back while you were talking. Uh, so did you see the video from the Calif California restaurant owner? I was mortified. Like, this one was like, you know, you, you hear stories. Oh, this one, you know, this restaurant's struggling. You know, it's hard to put, like, it's hard for, I think, people who don't own a business to really appreciate how it, some of these things are impacting a business owner. So there was a woman out in California. She owned a little, um, some sort of restaurant. I have no idea. And she took a video. Uh, um, a YouTube and posted it and I was like holy cow so she's videoing it and she said so I think she was in Los Angeles it doesn't matter she's in some city and the mayor has sh told her she has one of those tents outside and in California you have to have like three sides open or whatever she had it all set up she was using it they've now shut that down so she literally 
can't be open even well, with this outdoor thing institute three or four days ago they instituted a three week yeah. absolute so, lockdown you are not so, allowed to leave your house without a paper so she she said she was going back to her restaurant to pick up some supplies because they had planned a protest and she comes around the corner because it's like a parking lot and there is this massive tent set up with all these tables in it that the mayor approved for a movie set like for the people who do making a movie. So she was like, this is insane. She you know, pans and there's her tent that's not allowed. She's got to go out of business. And then there's exactly the same setup for a movie set. And she was like, this is insane. See, and what another unintended consequences of those things is, and this sort of goes back to that snitching society um, paradigm is, so now this poor lady is complaining about those people. And instead of the freedom flowing from, oh, that's right, we're letting these people do it. Let's so you be reasonable. Can, they're going to now this. say they can. Now they're going to go after those right. people too. And that is the insidious true virus, right? right. This is a, like literally the re government's response to this virus is the actual <laughs> sickness it's the actual disease that is being spread and you know i think more and more people have to speak up you have to start saying no this is unacceptable i will not do this um you know if you want to wear a mask wear a mask but i don't want to wear a mask and i'm not going to wear one i got into unless and don't get me wrong I'm not crazy. <laughs> it's, I'm just, there is no compelling reason. I am a healthy human being. I made decisions in my life to become healthier. Mm -hmm. So if there is a compelling reason at some stage, like, I don't know, there was an actual pandemic where, you know, 30 plus million people are dying. There are right. dead people right. in the street. The obits are out. Like we can actually tell that something is genuinely happening. I might wear a mask. Mm -hmm. It might make sense. If I lived in New York City, I might right. wear a mask. We're not, None of these we're not things congested. make sense for New Hampshire. So you know what? You and your little piddly crappy state can go do whatever you want with your curfews and your whatever, but this is the live free or die state. And we should be standing for that freedom here. And we should say, we're open for business. We will take your money. We will take the restaurants. We will help people economically instead of like just Going along with whatever the, 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 the worst hit states with the worst management, with the poorest governance are doing. You know, let's, uh, let's, let's do it the New Hampshire way. Um, so want to change subjects? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, did you read the article about New Bakery coming to our side of the river? I did Ooh, not. See, I always Ooh. have something good to talk about. Okay, so there was an article in the Union Leader the other day, maybe. Well, today's Tuesday, so it must have been yesterday. I think it was yesterday. So... First, there's a new bakery or newish bakery called Bearded Baking Company, which is at 819 um, Union Street, which I think used to be a bakery called Michelle's. It's a little tiny place between like Salmon and Sagamore on Union. So like if you were coming across the Amoskeg Bridge the, up that area. Um, and the guy, John, I think his name's Butati, John something. He was just on um, the baking show, not the British uh, baking yeah, show. Yeah. He's on the American whatever it is show. Sugar Rush. Sugar and something. he, I don't know, some show. But he, um, it was in the paper today that he did get cut out. You know, he had lost out. But he, I think he got to like the top five. So he did really well. So he does amazing cakes and stuff. He also, I looked this morning just to confirm. He also has coffees and stuff and breakfasts. And then has deli sandwiches and side salads and stuff and oh, everything. Wonderful. So that was one bakery. I was already excited about that one. Um, then I read that in the plaza where Frank Coors, there used to be a gyro place that was there for a very little mm. time. Me and Dan ate there a couple times. Anyways, it's Wild Orchid Bakery, operated by, operated by an all-woman team, which I don't really know if I care. Uh, Shelly Ann Storer will open. Um, she lost her job because Triolo's Bakery in Bedford permanently closed, and that's where she was working. So she decided to open her own. She is, I believe, from Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, wonderful. And so that's part of her influence, and that's going to be opening soon. So I'm very excited that we've got more than one bakery in Manchester because – I, I never understood why we never had bakeries. I, you know, I think that's wonderful, and I applaud people who are willing to take the risk. Yeah. This is a rough time to, yeah. to start a business. Yeah. Uh, a new Thai place opened down here on Elm Street where Republic used to yeah. be. We got some takeout last week. It was it was 
good. Yeah. Uh, you know, probably working out some kinks. Like I, yeah. I met the owners. They were walking in when I came to the studio last week, and uh, they were very excited. It was their first day. So I see Yelp reviews are yeah. coming out and stuff. So definitely, people should look for that too. There's and um. There's also I noticed they're just in the clean out stages. Um, on South Main Street, where Dickie Boy Subs used to be. When you come like across from the TD Bank, there's this little storefront that was never open, but I think that's where Dickie Boy Subs was based out of. It says uh, Tamara Cucina, and it says um, something. It's Italian, I think, and so good that you'll want it today and tomorrow, or something <laughs> like that. So that, well, I'm. I, they were literally just like scraping down windows and stuff. It didn't look like they were anywhere as near, but things go fast. Um, but it's important that people re realize that all the time, not just during COVID, but more now, um, you you really need to support these local businesses so that they're there next summer when we're, you know, not crazy, hopefully. Because another, I mean, unintended consequence out of all of this is, for me in any event, is this sort of uh, mashing of the corporatism, right? Capitalism, as I like to call it, right? Because you'll see the memes and the questions go around where it's like, why can you go to uh, Costco, Costco and, right. and but you can't, you know, go yep. to here or why can you go to a, a, a protest, but you can't go to yeah. church or, you know, that kind of stuff. And I think, you know, I think those are questions that people should genuinely be asking themselves. I also think, and, and this is an unpopular opinion, I am willing to admit it. Um, I am not an anti-vaxxer. I'm going to start yeah. there, yeah. but I am pro uh, Pro-informed consent. Right, I agree. And they are talking about this vaccine, which has not gone through the right testing. Um, and it is an RNA vaccine, mm -hmm. which means it literally will change your DNA. And uh, we don't know what that is. Now, mm -hmm. I watched some videos, and it's hard, you know, because there's a lot of, like, wackadoodle woo stuff yeah. out there there's a lot of it's hard to know which is le which is the legit it's, you know, science you know is it you know the 5g microchip nano <laughs> thing that is going to turn don't us into robots yeah i don't know but here is what i do know in a free society every wackadoodle let's gets to put their crazy ideas out there and then we all get to as society pick and choose and go and then the Good ideas, the best ideas are supposed to bubble up to the top. Mm -hmm. What we now have is a world of experts where they're saying this is it and it's just going to be forced on people. So this vaccine, I am not, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit this round out. Well, that's what I said. I, You know, somebody said, would you take the vaccine? I said, maybe down the road, you know, maybe next year. But, but I don't I'm not in a next year. So here's the thing. That's what I mean. I don't know wh when I would feel comfortable. The, the, the medical stuff that I've seen so far on this says that in um, in clinical tests that they did on animals, specifically ferrets, I didn't know where they said ferrets have a very similar immune system. Who knew? Who knew? Okay, I didn't. But um, that um, it, ha it does cause immune compromised responses, mm. right? And so this would be where you start to get things like inflammation in your joints, yeah. you know, like the weird stuff. And I will tell you this, Tammy, I was forced to get a vaccination in order to get my master's of fine arts at City College in New York. I managed to go through the entire four year program without getting the vaccine. Um, you know, I would just kind of like, be like ah, I don't know, you know, I was trying to get pregnant yeah. at the time. Like, you know, I was just like, ah, I don't want to like put all this yeah. MRR, MMR, the measles, mumps, yep, rubella yep. one. I'd had it before. They just wanted the paperwork and I couldn't find it. I'm an immigrant. I'd moved. Right. So I, I went through the entire program. I did not get me measles, mumps or rubella. Uh, we, uh, when I went to get my degree, they were like, oh, we see here you didn't get vaccinated. We refuse to give yeah. you your degree I unless a... you prove you were vaccinated. And it was right when we were moving. So I actually went and got a vaccination. And I had a decade. I can't prove it was yeah, that. But... but I moved to New Hampshire. I gained 50 pounds. I got joint problems. I got all this stuff. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Cor we don't correlation know. is not causation. I understand all of that. I can only speak out of my personal experience that it took a long slog back to hell. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I'm not a really, I'm definitely, I see a lot of people um, saying, oh yeah, I definitely take it and more power to them if that's what they think makes their life better, you know, fine. But 
I, I'm not interested. I mean, I'm really because they're they're also talking. I mean, they're already forcing it on the military. That that one happened. That's that's going. And then we're going to have, you know, first responders, so our doctors, our nurses, our, our um, police, our firemen. And I'm like, what if it is a bum vaccine? Right. And, and there goes all our people. <laughs> you know, that doesn't, I don't know. So, so I think there are just a lot of questions and that everyone should be skeptical yep. about what is happening right now. Um, I know you're Facebook living, so I'm going to say this because otherwise... It'll probably be outdated by the time people watch the show, but um, ManchesterGOP.com, you can go there um, this coming Saturday, uh, the 12th, at Murphy's Diner at 1230 in the afternoon. We're doing our holiday gathering as a brunch this year instead nice. of a full-blown party. Um, tickets are just $30. It's a great way to support Republicans here in Manchester. Um, you can Google Manchester GOP holiday gathering, and I'm sure it'll bring you to the event, right? Um, if you can't find it, you can email us at manchatalk at gmail.com, and we can send you the link. Um, if you have any questions or any subject matter that you'd like to see us tackle over these upcoming winter months, uh, email us, manchatalk at gmail.com. Uh, you know, we have to think of ideas. It'd be nice if somebody else had said, hey, you know, like I, I really did want to get back to doing some holiday shopping tips, but... There was nothing to be found, which made me sad because last year I was able to talk about all these exciting fairs and oh, things. Oh, and you're true. No. But if you are looking for Christmas decorations, you can get a 2020 dumpster fire light for your Christmas tree on Amazon. <laughs> Crazy land. Um, that's pretty much all we got. Uh, back to winter. Hopefully it'll get a little warmer later in the week and some of the ice that accumulated will melt. Yeah, yeah, I think the this, the downtown this, looks awful. Yeah, I'm sorry, it looks awful. Well, you know, it's it's not very well. Oh, we didn't even get to talk about the homeless this no, week. No, let's talk about them next week. <laughs> see where they move into. All right, into. guys, that's all we got. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye.